Representative Donald J. Trump was arraigned today at his first court appearance in the federal indictment involving his 37 felony counts uh, in the document scandal that has been gripping the nation. Former President Trump has been arrested and surrendered to federal authorities at the Wilkie D. Ferguson Jr. Courthouse. Uh, since leaving the, uh, leaving the courthouse, President Trump has pled not guilty to charges involving misleading the federal uh, misleading federal investigators, as well as mishandling some of the country's most sensitive documents. Uh, Trump, Trump was quickly processed in and out uh, before a magistrate judge at 3 p.m. alongside his co-defendant, uh, Walter Knott. Now, the interesting thing about uh, the co-defendant, Walt Nada, he actually did not enter a plea today because he does not have a lawyer. Uh, now, Mr. Nada is not a uh, not a lawyer, not a uh, political official. He's Donald Trump's body man. He's the person who gets Donald Trump uh, Coca Colas and Big Macs and uh, buckets of chicken, uh, those sorts of things. And so, Mr. Nada, his entire criminal defense in this case is being financed by not directly by President Trump, but by people who run PACs and who are supporters of President Trump. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting going forward to see exactly what Mr. Nada's uh, plans are going. For, uh, in this case, because if he flips and testifies against President Trump, that may be the last nail in the coffin when it comes to this investigation, when it comes to getting a conviction uh, in this case. Now, the federal uh, prosecutions of this nature have about a 99 percent conviction rate. Uh, so when the federal government brings a case like this, in the words of Omar from The Wire, uh, if you're going to come at the king, you best not miss. And normally, the federal government does not miss. Uh, I want to take a couple minutes just to break down these charges charges against President Trump and to myth bust much of the things that have been percolating in right-wing media with regards to these charges. Uh, so of the 37 charges, 31 are for violation of the Espionage Act. So the Espionage Act does not mean that Donald Trump was actively spying uh, on the United States government. It does not mean he was dressed up like James Bond, sneaking around, stealing files. Uh, at, uh, conversely, the Espionage Act was actually created during the Woodrow Wilson administration in World War I and has been used to prosecute, in the, <clears throat> prosecute individuals uh, who have been historically misplacing and misusing government documents. This, The Espionage Act has nothing to do with classification of documents. That's the most important thing to understand, because the Espionage Act was actually written and enacted before the classification system was even put in place by the U.S. government. So when you hear this argument, well, Donald Trump had the power to declassify them. It has nothing to do with declassification. The charges that are against him are two parts of the Espionage Act. One, with regards to retention of documents. He retained these documents without authorization. So anytime you retain national security-related documents without authorization to do so, that is a violation of the espionage act, regardless of who does it, regardless of classification level. Secondarily, dissemination and distribution of those documents. Because it is widely accepted that Donald Trump did show these documents to other individuals, and we know this because Donald Trump is on tape saying that he showed these documents to other other individuals. So this is where you get 31 counts of violation of the Espionage Act. So when you hear the Trumpers say, well, he had the power to declassify them, the Espionage Act has nothing to do with classification. When you hear them say, well, he had uh, the right to, po uh, to possess them, he did not have the right to possess them. When they say, well, the Presidential Records Act uh, is uh, at play here, the Presidential Records Act has nothing to do with this because these are not presidential records. These are records of the federal government. They have no, at no point in time were in the coverture or in the ownership of President Trump. They belong to our government, not to the individual being Donald Trump. The Presidential Record Act's at is something which allows presidents to maintain their own documents and their own records when they leave the White House. So if you have notes, if you have uh, letters, if you have things about your deliberation process or things for your presidential library or biography, that is what the Presidential Record Act covered, covers. It does not cover sensitive Pentagon documents. Also, the other seven counts against Donald Trump are primarily for misleading prosecutors, lying to federal investigators, obstructing justice, willfully uh, uh, retaining documents. How do we know that he willfully retained the documents? Well, it wasn't ne uh, negligent because he did it intentionally. It's not as if he just had a briefcase and these documents happened to fall in there. If that was the case, then the, uh, we wouldn't see charges. It's because he intentionally took these documents. He intentionally hid them from the federal investigators. He intentionally lied to those federal investigators. That's how we know that the retention of these documents are willful. How do we know that? Because he says on tape, I have the power to declassify these documents. I did not do so. 
So the prosecutor, Jack Smith, in this case, has worked hard to paint a very clear and direct picture and using as the sources for his charges against Donald Trump, not uh, witnesses, but Donald Trump himself. The majority of the quotes in this 37-page indictment are in this 37-count indictment are from Donald Trump and from Donald Trump's lawyers. There's even a quote in there where, they say, where Donald Trump says, what if we just tell them that we don't have anything? That is called obstruction of justice. And so for the people saying, well, Donald Trump had the right to have these documents, obstruction of justice does not require an underlying crime to be proven. That is to say, you do not have to prove that Donald Trump violated the Espionage Act for to also have obstruction of justice. Even if you're completely innocent of the underlying crime because you obstructed federal investigators and prosecutors from being able to prosecute that crime, that is still obstruction of justice. So even if you take Donald Trump's words for what they are, if you take all of his defenses for what they are, if you believe him on face value, he has still committed multiple felony charges. All these charges have run consecutively will land Donald Trump in jail for over 400 years. But in reality, more than likely, Donald Trump, if convicted in this case, will be sentenced to about five years in federal prison and will serve about a year, up to 18 months in custody, in reality. So Donald Trump's best bet is, guess what, a plea deal. But if Donald Trump won't get a plea deal in this case because he continuously has attacked the prosecutor, has continuously attacked the judge, has continuously attacked the Department of Justice and Merrick Garland and Joe Biden and every part of the federal government that would be responsible of actually showing him leniency and mercy when it comes to this case. And then on this question of sentencing, well, what the jury is going to look at when it comes to sentencing is whether or not this person was actually sorry for what they did. Have, did they actually learn a lesson? Are they actually not going to do this again if they, uh, uh, if they are uh, let go in this case? And what we're seeing is every single statement that John, Donald Trump makes from the time this indictment came down until the time that he goes to trial can and will be used against him in a court of law. So when you get to a sentencing place in this case, all the prosecution is going to have to do is play an hour of tape of just Donald Trump lying and lying and lying and tell the jury to give him the maximum prosecution that the law allows. And guess what? Interesting thing. The Republican candidates for president more than likely will not pardon Donald Trump. Only Vivek Ramswani has announced so far that he would pardon Donald Trump. Do you think Chris Christie is going to pardon Donald Trump? Do you think that Mike Pence is going to pardon Trump after Trump tried to assassinate him? Do you really think Don, uh, Ron DeSantis is going to pardon Trump after Trump ostensibly called him a pedophile? Donald Trump has dug his own hole, and it's going to be up to him to get out of it. And his attorneys need to tell him that this is the time to drop the game, to drop hubris, and to actually come to a place of understanding the crimes you've committed and the danger ahead of you, and to beg for a plea deal. And the reason I think that this happened is the day after uh, the indictments came down, two of Donald Trump's attorneys resigned, which lets you know that they told him what the case was. He refused to accept it. So Donald Trump has placed himself in a place that we have not seen in American history, where he will be the first president to serve jail time after his presidency. This is a dangerous place for this nation. This is a dangerous place for our Constitution. But today, the rule of law shows that it's more powerful than the rule of men. I think it's important that we understand exactly what this moment and what this time means for America and that we work to come together around it. Because at the end of the day, we have to know that regardless of your position in American society, regardless of your wealth, of your political connections, regardless of the number of people who support you, we have to be a nation where the rule of law is more powerful than the rule of men. And that means holding responsible even the former president of the United States of America.